This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at rate expressions. The rate of reaction between two reactants A and B can be determined experimentally. The rate of reaction will be found to be proportional to the concentration of A raised to a certain power and also the concentration of B raised to a certain power. So from this, we can write the rate expression or the rate law for the above reaction. So it's rate equals K, the concentration of A raised to a power, multiplied by the concentration of B also raised to a power. In the rate expression, K is the rate constant, which is a constant for a particular reaction at a specified temperature. Therefore, it's temperature dependent. X is the order of reaction with respect to A, and Y is the order of reaction with respect to B. The overall order of reaction is X plus Y. Orders of reaction and the rate expression can only be determined experimentally. Next we look at an example. The above reaction was shown experimentally to be second order with respect to the nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to hydrogen. So here we have the rate expression or the rate law for the above reaction. Rate equals K multiplied by the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide raised to the power 2 multiplied by the concentration of the hydrogen. The overall order of reaction is 2 plus 1, therefore it is a third order reaction. Next we look at orders of reaction. The order of reaction with respect to a particular reactant is the power to which the concentration of the reactant is raised in the rate expression. In this table we can see the effect on the rate of reaction for a reaction that is zero order, first order and second order with respect to a particular reactant. If a reaction is zero order with respect to a particular reactant, then changing the concentration of the reactant will have no effect on the rate of reaction. If the order of reaction is first order with respect to a particular reactant, then any change in the concentration of that reactant will produce a directly proportional change in the rate of reaction. For example, if we double the concentration of the reactant, then we double the rate of reaction. If we triple the concentration of the reactant, then we triple the rate of reaction. And finally, if the reaction is second order with respect to a particular reactant, any change in the concentration of that reactant will produce an effect on the rate of reaction that's proportional to the square of the change. For example, if the concentration of the reactant is doubled, then the rate of reaction will increase by a factor of 4. If the concentration of the reactant is tripled, then the rate of reaction will increase by a factor of 9. And here we have an example of a rate expression for zero order, first order and second order. As you can see, a zero order reactant does not appear in the rate expression. Next, we look at how to determine the order of reaction with respect to a particular reactant from experimental data. Here we have the initial concentrations of the nitrogen monoxide, the hydrogen, and we have the initial rate of formation of nitrogen. In experiments 1 and 2, the concentration of nitrogen monoxide is kept constant and the concentration of the hydrogen is doubled. So let's look at the effect of doubling the concentration of hydrogen on the initial rate of reaction. As you can see, the rate of reaction has doubled from 2.53 times 10 to the negative 6 to 5.06 times 10 to the negative 6. So by doubling the concentration of the hydrogen, we've doubled the rate of reaction. This is a directly proportional change, therefore the reaction is first order with respect to hydrogen. Next we look at the nitrogen monoxide. In experiments 1 and 4, the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is tripled and the concentration of the hydrogen remains constant. So let's have a look at the effect of tripling the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide on the rate of reaction. If we compare the rate of reaction in experiment 1 and experiment 4, we can see the rate of reaction has increased by a factor of 9. 
So by tripling the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide, we've produced a change in the rate of reaction, which is equal to the square of the change made to the concentration. That tells us that the reaction is second order with respect to the nitrogen monoxide. So once again, if we look at the rate expression, the reaction is second order with respect to the nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to the hydrogen. So once again, this demonstrates that the rate expression can only be determined from experimental data and not by the coefficients in the balanced equation. Let's have a look at one more example. Here we have the initial concentration of X, the initial concentration of the OH negative ion and the initial rate of reaction. In experiments one and two, the concentration of X remains constant and the concentration of the OH negative ion is doubled. If we have a look at the effect on the initial rate of reaction, we can see that doubling the concentration of the OH negative ions has had no effect. Therefore, we can say that the reaction is zero order with respect to the OH negative ions. Next, we look at the effect of doubling the concentration of X in experiments two and three. If we look at the rate of reaction, we can see that by doubling the concentration of X, the rate of reaction has also doubled. That tells us that the reaction is first order with respect to X. So here's the rate expression for the reaction. Because the reaction is zero order with respect to the OH negative ions, it doesn't appear in the rate expression. So the reaction is zero order with respect to the OH negative ions and first order with respect to X. Overall, it's a first order reaction. So that's all from this video. Don't forget to check the video description for a link to a practice worksheet.